an introduction wherein I will present key concepts in metrology, the SI system of units, as well as measurements. We will then look at calibration, its objectives, and the processes that constitute a calibration. I will also be presenting the benefits of calibration, considerations on the frequency of calibration, and the risks involved when one fails to calibrate his or her equipment. I will also discuss the salient points about and methodological traceability. Last but not the least, would be a discussion on calibration reports, their importance, and how to interpret them. To end this presentation, a wrap-up of topics discussed and a conclusion will be given. Often confused with meteorology, which is the science dealing with the atmosphere and its phenomena, including both weather and climate, metrology is defined by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures or the BIPM as a science of measurement, embracing both experimental and theoretical determinations at any level of uncertainty in any field of science and technology. In essence, Metrology is simply the theoretical and practical use of the science of measurement. Metrology is important because almost all of everyday life, not to mention practical science, technology, engineering, and medicine, involves measurements that we rely on for our health, commercial prosperity, quality of life, and the protection of the environment. We measure practically everything, the weight of our food, the volume of our fuel, the distance between two points, the temperature of the room, the noise at the workplace, etc. Incorrect measurements lead to wrong decisions which can have serious consequences. Moreover, metrology is a structure that ensures these measurements are stable, comparable, and accurate, providing confidence in measurement at a stated level, usually by quoting a measurement uncertainty. Metrology is applied in practically all fields including agriculture, commerce, manufacturing, to name a few. The three basic activities of metrology include the definition of internationally accepted units of measurement, the reality of measurement in practice, and the application of chains of traceability linking measurements to reference standards. As such, metrology is regarded as a key to achieving accuracy. The aim is to provide accurate and therefore reliable measurements for trade, health, safety, and the environment. It is especially important in processes where products need to meet strict tolerances. As previously mentioned, metrology is concerned with maintaining an internationally accepted system of units of measurements. The recommended practical system is that of the International System of Units with an international abbreviation of SI. Currently, there are seven base units all chosen for historical reasons and by convention regarded as dimensionally independent. These are second for time, meter for length, kilogram for mass, candela for luminous intensity, mole for amount of substance, kelvin for temperature, ampere for electric current. Earlier, G as a science of measurement, but what really is measurement? Measurement is defined as the process by which we obtain a value of a quantity which is expressed as the product of a numerical value and a measurement unit. In measurement, the numerical value and the unit of measurement go hand in hand, otherwise it is meaningless. Let us take for example a man who takes his weight on a bathroom scale. If the indicator of the scale shows the number 60, writing it down as 60 won't actually mean anything. If you can recall your years in school, answers in math and science problems won't gain points when units are not stated. However, when we write down the number together with the unit, case is kilograms, the measurement is now meaningful, and we can say that his weight is 60 kilograms. Basically, measurement is a comparison between an object whose physical quantities you want to measure and a measurement device which could be a ruler, a balance, a thermometer, or a gauge. While technology has led to the development of more accurate and precise instruments, measurements made on such instruments are not free of error. Even doing something as simple as measuring the length of an object with a ruler is subject to limitations that can affect how close your measurement is to its true value. For example, how clear and accurate is the scale on the ruler? How wide are the centimeter markings on the ruler? 
Can you trust that each centimeter marking represents exactly one centimeter? It is almost certainly not perfect, though it's probably pretty close. Now let us take for example the case of this top loading spring scale, which has a capacity of 100 kilograms and a readability of 200 grams. The indications of this device will not be able to provide you direct information when the pointer falls in between two minor markings. At some point, you will have to make some sort of approximation or estimate. This is one possible source of error. There could be a multitude of sources of errors in a measurement. The most common ones are instrument limitations, which are due to the way these devices are designed. For example, a weigh bridge with a readability of 5 kilograms will display the weight of a 177 kilogram container as either 175 kilograms or 180 kilograms depending on the algorithm of the weigh bridge. The second common source of errors are human factors which refer to the inaccuracies attributed to the skill and judgment of the human operator. As they say, to err is human, and this is more pronounced in measurements where humans are said to read the instrument indication. Lastly, environmental conditions can also have an impact on the measurements you make. Fluctuating temperature and relative humidity can make the performance of an analytical balance erratic and lead you to have inaccurate results. Other factors such as equipment wear and tear may also have significant effects on a measurement. Although there is no such a thing as a perfectly accurate measurement due to some errors here and there, our pursuit for better measurement should not be hindered. There are in fact ways for us to circumvent these errors, one of which would be calibration, a process that can help us establish the accuracy of our measuring device. According to the International Vocabulary of Metrology or VIM, calibration is a set of operations that establish under specified conditions the relationship between values indicated by a measuring instrument, a measuring system or values represented by a material measure, and the corresponding measurement. I find this definition rather too technical, so I tried to look for a more simple one. Calibration can be briefly described as an activity where the instrument being tested is compared to a known reference value. At the simplest level, calibration is a comparison between measurements, one of known magnitude or correctness made or set with one device, and another measurement made in as similar a way as possible with a second device. The device with known or assigned correctness is called the standard, while the second device is the unit under test or test instrument. Both measurement and calibration are similar in the sense that they both involve a comparison using a measurement device. Their difference lies in the comparison being done. Measurement involves the comparison between an object and a measurement device, while in calibration, it is your measurement device that is compared to a reference standard. When a device is being calibrated, it is important to note that the reference standard must be better in terms of accuracy compared to the unit under test or the UUT. To test whether a planned calibration is acceptable, we take the ratio of the accuracy of the device and the reference. This is known as a test accuracy ratio or the TAR. Typically, the accuracy of the standard should be 10 times the accuracy of the measuring device being tested. However, an accuracy ratio of 3 is to 1 is acceptable by most standards organization. Generally, calibration has two objectives. The first one is to check the accuracy of the instrument. Calibration defines the accuracy and quality of measurements recorded using a piece of equipment. Over time, there is a tendency for results and accuracy to drift, particularly when using technologies or measuring parameters such as temperature and humidity. To be confident in the results being measured, there is an ongoing need to maintain the calibration of equipment throughout its lifetime for reliable, accurate, and repeatable measurements. The goal of calibration is to minimize any measurement uncertainty by ensuring the accuracy of the test equipment. Calibration quantifies and controls errors or uncertainties within measurement processes to an acceptable level. The second objective is to determine the traceability of the measurement. Calibrating a device to determine its accuracy relies on the reference instrument it is calibrated with and the traceability of the reference's calibration. Almost without exception, precision measurement traceability is compared to the International System of Units or the SI. In order for a process to be considered a calibration, 
the following must be met. The first one is the application of tests to the instrument under specified conditions. The second one is the determination of the error or variation of indication. And the third one is the evaluation of uncertainty of measurement to be attributed to the results. With this in mind, is loading a test weight on the weighing instrument considered a calibration? Contrary to common belief, this is not considered a calibration because only one of the mentioned conditions will be verification. The following benefits will be enjoyed when you calibrate your equipment. The first one is more savings. When you calibrate your equipment on recommended schedules, you can save a great deal of money. Since calibrating equipment prevents accuracy errors, it helps manufacturers limit mistakes during the production process that would lead to unusable products. Similarly, inaccurate food temperature measurements could result in spoiled products. In research labs, inaccuracy could end up giving staff members incorrect readouts, rendering any results meaningless. Whatever your industry, errors eventually raise your costs. Calibrating your equipment allows you to save money as you won't waste funds throwing away faulty products or spending more on staff costs when they have in a lab. You'll also save money and raise your revenue as you'll reduce expenses related to having to stop processes and restart them once your team discovers an error. By reducing error, you better streamline your organization and ensure you get maximum value out of your equipment. The second benefit is improved safety. When you use calibrated equipment for essential processes, safety is paramount. Even minor inaccuracies could cause a machine to work incorrectly or give you false information about how safe something is, leading to injuries to your staff or machinery breaking down. Regularly calibrating your equipment allows you to have accurate measurements and avoid unsafe situations. Since calibration increases safety, Many industries use it to keep their assets and staff protected. Some of the most common industries using calibration to improve their safety include medical, manufacturing, and food industries. The third benefit is easier certification. Many industries require companies to have relevant certifications to operate legally. Before you do particular tasks, you'll likely need verification from a regulatory body. Often, these certifications demand proof you calibrate your equipment and are trustworthy enough to produce accurate results. If you regularly calibrate your equipment, you can more easily receive certification from relevant regulatory bodies. Calibration allows your equipment to deliver precise results, helping you pass any certification tests concerning your device's accuracy. Last but not the least is longer instrument life. Any measuring device will wear down over time. Instead of replacing it with a new one once it stops providing accurate measurements, you can calibrate it to get back to normal levels. After you calibrate your old equipment, it should perform at its original standard. As a result, you can keep using a device for a lot longer. Calibration can also help you pay attention to how fast a piece of equipment degrades, helping you keep an eye on factors such as environmental pressures or particular applications that lead to more wear and tear. With this information, you can make adjustments to prevent faster wear and tear and keep your instruments in better conditions longer. At the Metrology Laboratory, we are usually asked how often should one calibrate his or her instrument. I would like to emphasize the fact that the Metrology Laboratory does not regulate the frequency of your calibration. As such, there are considerations you have to make when deciding on the frequency of calibration of your devices and instruments. These are Criticality of the measurement in question. If you do critical measurements often, then a shorter time span between calibrations will mean there is less chance of questionable test results. Oftentimes, calibrating at shorter intervals will afford you with better specifications. Depending on their usage, you may have to calibrate equipment on a monthly, quarterly, or semi-annually basis. Another consideration would be manufacturer's recommendation. You should keep up with the manufacturer's recommended frequency. However, you should also note that critical measurements may require different intervals. Another consideration would be stability history of the instrument. History will reflect the stability of your instrument. An aging equipment will show somewhat unstable behavior and will require a more frequent calibration. 
there are also regulatory requirements and quality systems. Requirements on calibration vary depending on the industry in question. For example, the Department of Energy requires petroleum product haulers to have their vehicle tankers calibrated annually. On the other hand, the Consumer Welfare Act states that all instruments for determining weights and measures in all consumer and consumer-related transactions shall be tested, calibrated, and sealed every six months by the official sealer who shall be the provincial or city or municipal treasurer or his authorized representative upon payment of fees under existing law. However, of the Consumer Welfare Act depends on the local government unit. Other considerations such as frequency of usage as well as how the operators take care of the equipment when taking measurement are also things you have to take into account. So what happens when you forgo the calibration of your equipment? First and foremost, you will likely experience unscheduled downtime. There will be a failure to recognize an aging equipment which ultimately leads to equipment malfunctions. Something you want to avoid as it diminishes your production efficiency. There is also poor product quality. The items you produce might not be able to meet the regulatory standards. You will also be facing process and audit issues. Auditors will certainly be looking for the proof that your equipment are properly calibrated. Failure to present the necessary documents would mean having to answer audit findings. Unless, of course, you are fond of identifying root causes and making corrective actions. And there is also product rework and recalls. Oftentimes, when products are found to be inferior, rework will have to be made prior to release in the market. However, when the products are already out in the market, the manufacturer will have to face the grueling process of having to recall the product and the backlash or the negative publicity it creates on the product. In both instances, the cost increases and therefore diminishing the profit. Ultimately, all measurements are used to help make decisions and poor quality measurements result in poor quality decisions. The uncertainty in a measurement is a numerical estimate of the spread of values that could reasonably be attributed to the quality's true value. It is a measure of the quality of a measurement and provides a means to assess and minimize the risk and possible consequences of poor decisions. For example, we may want to determine whether the diameter of an equipment spare part is too big, too small, or just right. Our aim is to balance the cost of rejecting good parts and of customer complaints if we are to accept faulty parts against the cost of an accurate but over-engineered measurement system. When making these decisions, the uncertainty in the measurement is as important as the measurement itself. The uncertainty reported on your certificate is information necessary for you to calculate the uncertainty in your measurements. Metrological traceability is a property of a measurement result whereby the result can be related to a reference through a documented and broken chain of calibrations, each contributing to the measurement uncertainty. Traceability is established through reference numbers that connect calibration results back to the standards used for reference. These numbers allow each measurement made to be traced back to the international standard through an unbroken chain of calibrations. As calibrations move up the traceability chain towards the international standard, which is the SI, the tolerances become tighter and tighter, and the amount results of the National Metrology Laboratory of the Philippines. who in turn trace back their measurements to the SI units. They can claim anything they want in a test or calibration report. With traceability and the independent verification of an accreditation or inspection body, you can bring victim to fraudulent information and activities. Whatever your industry, it couldn't be emphasized enough that the results you report to your customers may be used to provide calibrations, perform tests, manufacture products, or make decisions which could affect health, safety, and even court proceedings.
A calibration report, also known as a calibration certificate, is an important document containing essential information regarding equipment calibration and conditions. Calibration report should always be received after calibration, regardless of if you have accredited calibrations or traceable calibrations performed on your equipment. Depending on the application in which some equipment is used, you may be required to have such documentation on file for the said equipment all the time. It is important to keep calibration reports up to date and organized. Each calibration report will have a serial number that associates one calibration with one instrument. Therefore, it should be easy to keep calibration reports in order. This helps with audits and day-to-day -day functions. The information that is contained in these reports help you to pass inspections with accrediting bodies as well as know whether your equipment is safe to use. Your calibration report provides information on the accuracy, reliability, traceability, and uncertainty of the measurements made with the device. When you submit your equipment for calibration, always ensure that you claim your calibration certificate. It should be checked and assessed to ensure that the instrument is fit for its intended use. First, the certificate must correlate with the instrument. This is confirmed through matching the serial or identification number of the instrument with the number on the certificate. Then, the instrument's range and resolution must be examined to see whether these fulfill the measurement requirements. For example, to make a weight measurement of 160.5 grams, the range of the measuring instrument should cover 0 grams to maybe around 200 grams, and the resolution is 0.1 grams. The next parameter to be checked is the instrument's accuracy. The accuracy of the instrument or the maximum error reported on the certificate should meet the specified required accuracy of the measurement. However, when checking the accuracy of the instrument, the uncertainty of measurement should also be considered. For example, if the required accuracy of the measurement is plus minus 50 grams, then the maximum error reported on the certificate plus the measurement uncertainty should be within that value. If the accuracy of the instrument or the maximum error is stated as plus 30 grams, and the uncertainty of measurement associated with this value is plus minus 16 grams, then combining these values will give us a range of 14 to 46 grams. This value is less than the tolerance value of 50 grams, which gives us the assurance that our measurements using this device complies with the required accuracy. If the uncertainty of measurement becomes 21 grams, the range now would become 9 to 51 grams, which already exceeds the plus 3 grams tolerance. This means that the measurement made with this device will not be able to comply with the required accuracy of the measurement. Today's presentation covered topics such as metrology, the SI system of units, measurement, calibration, what calibration is all about, its objectives, and the criterion that must be met in order for a process to be called a calibration. We also discussed the benefits of calibration, the considerations in determining the frequency of calibration, as well as the risks involved when you do not calibrate your equipment. We also had a brief discussion on uncertainty of measurement and metrological traceability, as well as a discussion on the importance of calibration reports and how to use the information you find in them. In conclusion, Calibration and subsequently calibration report results can be used to determine the overall accuracy and reliability of an instrument and can be also used to help determine when an instrument needs to be recalibrated. It is important to note that wherever measurement matters, matters. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.